Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I have had numerous people over the years uh, tell me that, well, that's what you believe, uh, but you, you don't know it. You just, you just believe it. You just have faith. And uh, many times I have presented uh, apologetics, uh, uh, um, arguments to um, try to persuade them that uh, my, my faith is, is based upon evidence and that uh, the evidence is so conclusive that the Bible is true and that uh, uh, believing in Jesus Christ as uh, Savior God is all true. I, 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 I've tried to prove this to people the best I could. And I have a lot of videos uh, that are would be under that um, category of apologetics, uh, providing evidence for my faith. But the bottom line is, uh, I can't really prove it I have to ask them to have faith, just as I have faith. Uh, in my in my mind, the evidence is so overwhelming in favor that of the Bible being true, and um, Jesus Christ uh, being God and Savior. That that is so obviously true to me. But the bottom line is, it all comes down to faith. Do I know it's true? Well, I think the evidence is powerful, but I don't know it. I believe it. And I have to admit, uh, God hasn't shown himself to me. God did not I, come to me in a vision. God did not appear to me. I didn't get to touch Him and see Him. My faith is based upon many years of study that has shown me that the evidence is overwhelming telling me that the Bible is true. But finally, it all boils down to faith. So, that's what I want to talk about, uh, faith. And uh, There's just a few verses here that uh, I will cover very quickly to, to show you that this, the idea of faith is the most important thing in the Bible. The idea of faith is the most important thing in our lives. So Ephesians uh, 2.8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. We get saved through our faith. That's how important faith is. Faith saves us. Actually, the Savior, Jesus Christ, saves us when we put our faith in Him as Savior. When, when we have faith that He died for our sins, He saves us at that point right there. Faith is that important. We do not save without faith. Romans 4 or 5 says, Our faith is credited as righteousness. You see, the Bible says that there's not one righteous person. If you think you're going to go to heaven based upon your own righteousness, then you're going to end up in hell. The Bible says none of us are righteous, not even one. The only righteousness that I have is the righteousness of Jesus Christ that has been credited to me when I put my faith in Jesus as my Savior. So, faith is credited as righteousness, it says in Romans 4, 5. Romans 3, 28 says, We conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. In other words, without repenting of sins or following the commandments or joining a religion or practicing a religion. Or, uh, the list goes on and on. Without doing any of those things, a man is justified by faith. Faith is what justifies us. Justified. That means that um, if God said to you, why should I let you into heaven? And you try to justify yourself to God by saying, well, I'm a good person, or 
I joined your religion or I, I did good deeds. If you're trying to be justified through your own efforts, through your, through your uh, own righteousness, you're going to hell instead because we have no righteousness on our own. In God's sight, we are all unrighteous. And the Bible says that a man is justified by faith. The Bible says in, in Hebrews 11, 6, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You think that you can get reconciled with God by joining a religion and doing religious things and doing good deeds and stopping your sins? No. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. You want to please God? You want to satisfy God, you want to be reconciled to God, you want to be right with God, then it's faith is what is required. So what is faith? The closest thing I've seen in the Bible that gives us a definition of faith is in Hebrews 11.1. 1. It says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. It says faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is uh, my hope that Jesus is going to get me into heaven because I put my faith in Him. That's what I'm hoping on. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's my hope. That's my faith. That's my belief. I'm relying on that. I'm depending on that. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now, did I see Jesus in the flesh? Did I see Him live a sinless life? perfect life? No. Did I see Jesus perform miracles? Feed the multitudes? Heal the blind and deaf and lame? Bring the death back, dead back to life? Did I see those things? No, I didn't see them. It says, the evidence of things not seen that's why it's faith, because I haven't seen it. I have faith that it's true. I know some of you are familiar with a uh, great Bible teacher and writer, uh, Dr. Peter Ruckman. Dr. Ruckman uh, was talking about this verse, and he said that Hebrews 11, 1, he says, when it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He says, substance, that means it's a material substance. And that's when he says, see this? This Bible here? This Bible is the substance. That's the substance of things hoped for. It's in the Bible that we learn about God about our Savior God, Jesus Christ, about His death on the cross for our sins and His resurrection and His promise of eternal life to those of us who put our faith in Him. He said, Dr. Reckman says, this is the substance. And the rest of the verse says, the evidence of things not seen. This is the evidence, the Bible. And if anybody wants to study the Bible and find evidence, then 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 um, I've got many videos. I've got numerous playlists on apologetics, on uh, prophecies in the Bible, of science in the Bible, and so on. The Bible is full of evidence so that our faith is not just blind faith, but our faith is has substance. It has evidence supporting it. But it says, the evidence of things not seen that's why it's faith, because we have not seen it. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, We walk by faith, not by sight. So 
So when people ask me, well, you can't prove it. You know, well, maybe I can. Uh, it depends on how much evidence is needed for you to be convinced. There's tons of evidence to support the Bible. But the, the fact is, I cannot necessarily prove it. That's why I'm asking you to have faith. That's why God puts such a great value on faith. He says we walk by faith, not by sight. Because Jesus is not here today, showing himself to us. We can't see him, so we must have faith. Go to John uh, 20, verse 29. This is, uh, to set it up, um, Jesus had been resurrected from the dead. And he appeared to numerous people. He appeared to the apostles. One of the apostles, Thomas, was told about Jesus' resurrection, but Thomas says he didn't believe it. Thomas says that he would not believe it unless he saw it. He even said, unless I see him with my own eyes, unless I touch him, unless I stick my fingers in his wounds, I'm not going to believe it. Well, that's when Jesus appeared to him. And it says in John 20, 29, Jesus saith unto him, Jesus talking to Thomas, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. You see, Thomas had to see Jesus and touch him. And when, Jesus, when Thomas saw Jesus and actually touched him and knew it, knew it was true, here he is, alive again in the flesh, a bodily resurrection from the dead. Thomas knew it was true. But see, Thomas didn't have faith. Thomas didn't have faith because he got to see it and touch it. He had knowledge. He knew it because he saw it and touched Jesus Christ. And Jesus is saying to him, Yeah, now that you've seen me, you believe. Anybody could do that. But what? Jesus values is someone who has not seen and yet believes. That's what faith is. That, that's why I believe God does not appear to everybody today and just say, here I am, look, see? Because no faith is required. If you get to see Jesus and touch Him, it's not a question of faith. It's knowledge. So, in a way, God values so much more those, those of us who do not get to see Jesus or touch Him, and yet we still have faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 too, we look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The author and finisher. He is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is everything. And that's why you, you, if you think that you're a Christian, I'm going to call it Christian. If you say you're a Christian, but you are uh, believing in your own righteousness to get to heaven, then you're not a Christian. You're just another religious person that's going to hell. If you, if, if you believe that you're going to go to heaven because of your religion and your religious practices and your rituals and, and all the religious work that you do, then you're not a Christian. A Christian is someone who has faith in Christ for salvation. We are relying on Christ, not our own ability, not our own righteousness. We look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So, I've had to come to the conclusion that, uh, yes, the Bible is full of 
proof and evidence. I think for any reasonable person, if they'll invest the time, there's a mountain of evidence to support the Bible. But the bottom line is, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, I guess if you have faith in Jesus as your Savior today, in a way, you are greater than the Apostle Paul. Now, some of you might say, well, that's pretty outlandish. Well, Jesus Christ appeared to the Apostle Paul in person. Paul didn't have to have faith because Paul got to see Jesus after the resurrection. You didn't get to see Jesus after the resurrection. And Jesus said, blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe. I look forward to your comments. Thank you.